Hola, mis queridos, como estas? Mi amo Alicia. Hello, my kittens. How are you? My name is Allison, and today we are playing Nancy Drew Labyrinth of Lies Collector's Edition. I am super excited to be playing this, and I know I say this every single time, but I'm just glad to be playing the second to last game of the Nancy Drew games to play on this channel. At least currently, we'll be getting Midnight in Salem next month. I am super looking forward to that. I just hope I can get it ahead of schedule of everyone else. I really thought pre-ordering it would get me ahead of everyone else, but I don't think it does. Gosh dang it, I thought it would. I don't know how Michael Gray keeps beating me to it. Anyway, let me tell you the difference between Collector's Edition and the regular game. Her Interactive likes to make a challenge for us. The only way you can get the Collector's Edition is if you pre-order it. Unfortunately, Midnight in Salem does not have a Collector's Edition. Even though I have a theory that Nisi does have a cell phone in that game, I'm not surprised they didn't do a bonus edition though, just because of how long it took them to make the original game. Basically, the difference between Collector's Edition and the regular game is if Nancy has a cell phone in the game. Pretty much all of that Collector's Edition is on that cell phone. You get phone charms, mini games, and if you're lucky, random texts from a certain someone. Usually that certain someone is Ned Nickerson, Nancy's boyfriend and or romantic friend. I say romantic friend is a pet peeve of mine because of the book series. Or it's either Bess Marvin, George Fain, or one of the Hardy boys, Frank and Joe Hardy. And I think that might be it. I'm not going to read off all the mini games that are on her cell phone, either here or in game, just because it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm taking the lazy path in doing that just because I want to make sure I get a lot of gaming done. I want to make sure you all get the gaming portion of Labyrinth of Lies rather than knowing which Nancy Drew game the mini games come from. Because all the mini games come from a specific Nancy Drew game that her interactive made. I think that's pretty cool trivia. And there's also a couple of other things on the cell phone that I think are pretty neat. And I think those features were added, I think, in Warnings of Waverly Academy. Can't remember what number of game that was. I think it was 21. Yeah, her interactive loves updating their interface, their menu screen, their features to the games. If you compare this to Secrets Can Kill, their very first game, you can see a huge difference, not just because of the menu screen, but because of the graphics as well, as well as the gameplay of it. Today's games are beautifully done and run much smoother, much nicer. I love it. I prefer it. And let me explain to you why. So currently there are two features that were added in this particular interface. One is the fast convo feature. I will actually show an example, which I have been doing in this particular game, Labyrinth of Lies. And the other feature is actually tied to a specific award. And that is the spoiler free achievement. Now the spoiler free achievement, I will get into the second feature, but let me explain the spoiler free achievement real quick. The spoiler free achievement you can get by either completing the master sleuth level of the game or by completing the amateur sleuth level of the game without using the second feature at least in my opinion but according to her interactives engine you have to avoid the red box and i will explain what that red box is there is a hint system that is connected to the spoiler free achievement. I actually super love the hint system. It is my way of cheating, my way of avoiding the internet for cheating, <laughs> my way of not having to call on my sister for help. That's actually a plus for me considering she only plays video games once and never goes back to them. I think that's weird, but hey, that's her prerogative, her choice. Anywho, I actually really like these uh, awards, these achievements. Her interactive gets so creative. It's beautiful. Uh, oh, right. So the teaser and bonus art. Gosh dang it, bonus art. Can you please bring back bloopers? I'm sure they did with Midnight in Salem. Teaser and bonus art, you gotta complete the game to unlock. You can't watch the cards and say I've done. I, I can get those things. You can't cheat the system. It doesn't work. I've tried multiple times, especially with other particular games. I think I was able to with one specific game. I can't remember which one it was, but give me one second because I forgot to do something. Okay, 
All right. Got it done. We are good. So, there are a few things that I do want to get into before we get into the game. One, there is one thing you get to do at the beginning of every single Nancy Drew game, which I think is super cool, is that you get two detective levels to choose from. You get Amateur Sleuth and Master Sleuth. Amateur, you get regular puzzles, hints available, detailed task list, hints refer to the hint system that I talked about. Master Sleuth, you get more challenging puzzles, no hints, basic task list. Now, before number 28 goes to Thornton Hall, Basic task list meant no task list whatsoever. The only thing you got was one thing on that task list, which said, I'm a senior detective, I don't need a task list, I am good. So you basically check that out, you're good for the rest of the game, no task list. But, and I haven't confirmed it with Ghost of Thornton Hall or Silent Spy, but I do know with Labyrinth of Lies and Shattered Medallion, you do get a basic task list. There is a task list. I am super excited about this. Because next year, I will be playing all the Nancy Drew games on Master Detective. Which is going to be difficult because I do know some of the games have more than one Master Detective level. For instance, stay tuned for Danger. I do know that has a third Senior Detective level. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Honestly. Help me out with that. Uh, okay, I think that's basically about it with the difference between the those two detective levels. The next thing I want to talk to you about is that her interactive bases all of their Nancy Drew games based off the Nancy Drew book series. This particular game, Labyrinth of Lies, is based off the Greek symbol mystery from the main series number 60. Now, I actually did do some research. Apparently, there are five different copies, five different bindings of the book, because there are five different covers. I will try to show those throughout this intro. If not, I will try to bring those up in the outro as well, because I will be doing a compare and contrast with the book as well as the game. I did read the book before playing the rest of the game, and... I gotta tell you, the book is really good. You gotta check it out. As far as like the story and the gameplay of it, of the actual game, the book is completely different. I will explain to you at the end of the video. Right now, we I, we gotta get into the video. So if anything, anything in this video does not look familiar, please, please, please check the links in the description box below. There's previous video as well as the playlist. I recommend the playlist because it will have everything that I've done so far with Labyrinth of Lies. And let's go ahead and get into the game. I forgot to mention if my voice sounds rough or odd at all throughout this video, I do apologize. I didn't realize I had a cold up until about a week ago and I'm like, oh, that sucks. And now I think that cold is just getting a little bit worse, even though I've been doing really good at taking care of myself. Yikes. Okay. So... I believe in this particular video, we're going to be working on this pulley system. And I think there's also one more thing that we're going to be doing. Let me actually go through this task list real quick, because I do know that I need to show you off the hint system real quick. Also, let me get some stuff done. Still haven't, haven't, make sure can't, that can't, can't, have, that's, we can't all check that know off yet. what I've done so have far. Still, that's did that. Alrighty then. So, for the hint system, it's these question marks right here. So, uh, I need a hint, please. There are times where we'll have just one basic hint, just like this. And that is fine. Sometimes it's generic, sometimes it's specific enough. Here's the thing. Sometimes you can't quite understand the hint when it's just the one. If that's the case, it's either because you're too far behind or too far ahead of the game. If that's the case, just go ahead and keep playing the game until the hint actually makes sense and then you'll be able to complete that task. And then there are other times where you're going to be able to have this. I already did click the I need a hint and it'll have a second box where it usually says I need a hint This says I need a solution. I'm going to avoid clicking that because that will ruin the spoiler free achievement from what I've learned. There we go. Okay. So this is what the loading bar looks like. It's basically 
kind of what it is when you're installing a video game for Nancy Drew, basically. It's kind of like this, basically. And again, those hints, if it doesn't make sense, you're either too far behind, too far ahead. Just keep playing the game until it does. If not, and you need another hint, go ahead and click that box. Just make sure you don't hit that red box unless you absolutely cannot take it anymore. That red solution box is your last resort. Unless you don't care about that spoiler free achievement, unless you just are adamant in giving in, giving up. I'm not trying to like tear you down or anything like that. It's just, I really want you to try to do your best when it comes to playing these games. Especially for me, because I suck. Even on Amateur Sleuth, because I need me a task list. And despite the Nancy Drew cheat book I have in front of me, which I still haven't put notes in for Labyrinth of Lies, I don't know why. Well, anyway. You got, you get the gist. Let's go ahead and check out this temple sketch because I think it might actually have some information about this pulley system. Um, I do need my notes paper. I need to counterbalance the weights to the production settings. All right, so we have the stylo bait, the entablature. We have the peristyle, we have the plinth, we have the pediment, and we have the portico. Now technically we don't need this information here, but it will help. Because not all of that is translated on... Xenia's notes. Now, where did I see those in her notes? There we are. Yeah, uh, we basically need to translate them. Okay. So let's go ahead and write all of these down because this will help us. Um, actually, let's just go ahead and look at them. Let's just do the contra contrast now so that we can just go ahead and write down the numbers rather than having to write all this down alongside it so that we can figure it out. So, uh, original political space or later marketplace feel, yeah, we don't need to, to worry about the Agora courtyard decoration. Um, I guess the entablature would have to be the re remaining weights. But, so right now we have stylobate is 80. Let's start with the plinth, since we know that is 40. Portico is 100. Parastyle hundred and twenty Stylobate is eighty So I guess that would make this Got it. Now maybe Gregor will talk to me. Wait, so if that's 60... Oh, the temple top. Okay, whatever. Alright, so, um... You know, this would give us a chance to talk to Gregor, Gregor again, but... I want to go back inside and figure out how to unlock that filing cabinet. Can we not interact with this? Uh, let me guess. I have to call her. 
things going. Can I get a key to the coin display? You'll need to open the filing cabinet first. The key to the filing cabinet is hidden inside the box with the animal figurines. Gotcha. Pair up the animals with the images so the animal and image pair represent the same god. You got it. I know you weren't brought here for this, but I need you to learn about provenance. As in verifying the authenticity of the art? You're as sharp as they say. That's it. Isn't that normally left to the experts? Generally, yes, but if we're dealing with theft of any kind, I need you to become an expert. Instantly? Unfortunately, but you'll come to it naturally. I'm flattered, but what makes you say that? You will find that it's like solving a mystery, which I hear you're pretty good at at home. I'll do my... Proving provenance is a classic whodunit. You look at a vase or a painting and you follow the clues to see who... done it. Who painted or sculpted or chiseled the work in question. When you put it that way, I think I'm comfortable with the methodology. Is that the right Perfect. Terms? You'll find what you need on the computer. Niobe may be able to help you. Wait, really? Bye-bye. Bye. She did give us... Oh, uh, yeah. The settings here. Um, so the reason why this is blank actually is because we can actually use one of our own photos. Which we have taken a few for information and use those as as the um, phone background, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, at least not right now. But uh, I, asking her that question did give us access to. I need to match the animals to the correct symbol. This puzzle, and this puzzle we will need is this book, not this one. But this one. Yeah, so I am actually familiar with a few. So I know the huntress has the owl. Aphrodite has the cow. Feather has the bird, I think. No, that has the... I actually don't remember. So this is actually where I could use some help on the from the book. Uh, let's start with the first. Zeus. Uh, Jupiter. And an eagle by his side. Oh, he has the eagle. Got it. Um. Okay, his wife had the cow. But what was her weapon? Oh, peacock. Got it. Got it. I guess Aphrodite had the dolphin then. Oh no, she had doves. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was a dolphin or a dove. Gotcha. Go to the sun. He had a dolphin. Got it. But what was his weapon? A liar? Got it. And... Mars, that would be the sword. And his was a magpie or vulture. bow in hand and she had the stag gotcha booyah Ooh. these 
must be the tags for the display. Yep. And here are the time cards for everyone. Sophia, Thalia, Michael, Yanni. Is Yanni a common name or something? What the heck? Ooh, someone was filed. Or someone had personal leave. Oh, we can use this for the thing over there. Oh, we have a key. Ayo. And we have the password to the computer. Alrighty. Now I can officially say we will be unlocking this computer in the next video. Oh, snappy diddles, we can put our phone here, which means we will be taking pictures of those dopesters out there. Alrighty. Oh, that's right, because Melina did ask us to do Providence Authenticating. Yeah, which we have done before in game number six, Secret of the Scarlet Hand. Booyah, yeah, that was actually my very first game that I played of Nisi Drew. I am super psyched that we get to do this again. But as I said, that will be in the next video. Let's go ahead and save here. Yeah. And you know what? I think I'm going to save it under a different name just to be safe. There we go. Quaddy Mundy. <laughs> it's kind of an ironic name because of... Uh, not just... It's not just an ironic title of it because of Secret of the Scarlet Hand. But it's also ironic because it's actually a real animal. I'm serious. I thought her interactive made up that name, or the people who spoke Nahuatl. But then when I went to, yeah, I think it was the Omaha Zoo, because I remember thinking, wait, the Quadi Mundi exists? No, it wasn't Omaha Zoo. It was some other zoo. It was the St. Louis Zoo, actually, because I think I was looking at lemurs, and I found the Quadi Mundi. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, I think Quadi Mundi is a type of lemur, I think. I also found the type of lemur that Zabumafu is. Yeah, if you're not familiar with who Zabumafu is, you are completely missing out. Oh my gosh, my high school, my high school years pretty much changed my life. And I'm not just saying that because of, you know, the social cliques of being in high school, but I'm talking about Saturday cartoons. <laughs> okay, so normally at this point of the outro, I try to do a review time, but I think I've already talked quite a bit. I think the only thing I'm going to mention here is that I'm going to repeat it. Labyrinth of Lies is based on a book called The Greek Symbol Mystery, number 60 from the main series. That is the original series that which started in 1930. And I actually suggest you get a copy to read it. And fortunately, I know a place you can get a copy. I will actually put a link in the description box below where you can get a free freaking copy. Yes, I said free. Seriously, I'm not sponsored. I'm not saying I'm sponsored at all. I'm just saying I found this website months ago and I am so glad I did because it saved me a bunch of money. <laughs> it's called archive.org. It has separate parts of the website has like a d database for different things. The best place to look for books is openlibrary.org, which is another part of the archives website. And there you can basically look for any Nancy Drew book. Seriously, any Nancy Drew book. They have tons. You can look up any Nancy Drew book and they will have it. Even cookbooks. Seriously. Okay, so I've been recording long enough. I gotta get going, everyone. There are freaking videos that I gotta take care of. I gotta freaking work on this in post. I, I, I'm just so far behind this week. This month has been hectic for me. Okay, so I will talk to you all soon, I promise. I hope I helped you out at least a little bit in this video. If not, I'm not doing my job. And I will talk to you all in the next video, which will be Nancy Drew, Labyrinth of Lies, Part 5. Booyah!
And on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, smash that like button like a kitten would. And if you're just now tuning into this channel, go ahead and click, -click, -click, -click that ugly red subscribe button. Make it that beautiful gray as well as that bell icon right next to it. That will notify you of all the videos that I do, which are on Tuesdays and Thursdays, as well as Sundays and even Wednesdays, which are late videos and vlogs, which rarely happen. And I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I am Sweet Rascally Rabbit, saying goodbye. Stay awesome and stay on YouTube! Yeah, in post, I am so taking out all of those coughs that happened at the beginning. Jeez.